hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen, the channel that brings you your team every single day. And if you want to make sure you never, ever miss out on any Rangers content, then the best way to do that is to hit the sub, ring the notification bell. And if you give this video a like as well, it helps with that very complicated YouTube algorithm, which I keep getting told about, but I don't really understand. But apparently liking the videos helps. Who knows? Anyway. We're going to talk a little bit, obviously, about the game yesterday. That's going to come towards the end of the video because we did do a quick reaction video yes, uh, yesterday evening. That, that's the Rangers reaction. Uh, it came out last night about half past eight. I think it was the first time I got a bit of free time to actually talk about the game uh, whilst obviously been at work. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about Fashion Sakala and his future at Rangers, which now appears to be in doubt. So goes the reports at this moment in time. We're going to talk about fullback worries. Yes, there are fullback worries, aren't there? There are some severe fullback worries um, over the right side and the left side. We're going to talk about James Tavernier, the um, address the elephant in the room, maybe, or the the, the holy um, man himself, in Mr. Tavernier. And we're also going to talk about what former Rangers uh, captain and Rangers legend Barry Ferguson has had to say about two established Rangers players and their possible futures at the club. Gotta love Barry, never pulls his punches, always speaks from the heart when it comes to our great club. Right, let's see. What are we going to talk about first? Well, let's talk, obviously, let's start with the full battle, worry, shall we? Now, one thing to come out of pre-season for me has been a real concern over the full-back position. Now, Ridvan Yilmaz has probably been the best of three, um, but that's that's like trying to pick, I don't know, a beauty queen am amongst three ugly people, or uh, I don't know, trying to pick, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult one. They've all been pretty bad for me. Um, Borna Barisic, well, we know Borna. It's not just pre-season with Borna, is it, really? You know, Borna's been bad for, for the last 18 months, really. Borna's been bad since 55. Uh, the, the Parkhead game where he absolutely, you know, just lost it and cost us and cost us that game. Um, you know, a number of times he... Last season, he you know he fell asleep at the back post. He didn't cover round. He you know he didn't pick up. He didn't cut out a cross. He didn't put in a tackle, and he really cost us. Now, look against teams like Kilmarnock, St Johnston, Ross County, you don't really notice it as much because of the fact that they are so genuinely awful. However, teams you do notice it against are going to be European opposition. Um, and obviously that lot from across the city. And we kind of keep afford to allowing Borna Barisic to, to play in these games and, and really just mess it up for Rangers and and, and teams really exploit the left side of our defence. I mean, it isn't obviously helped either by the fact that we have um, Ben Davis then. Ben's not the best either. So the left side of the defence is a bit of an issue. We'll talk about how we can solve it shortly. Ridvan has done OK. He's looked good at times, but, you know, the goal against Olympiacos, the third goal, he kind of went missing and messed that up. He looked a bit all over the place today, better going forward. But, you know, something that he needs to really develop. Now, look, James Tavernier is fantastic going forward. His crosses into the box, brilliant. His shots on goal, excellent. His set-piece plays, penalties, his free kicks, you know, very, very good indeed. You know, he's led the team in scoring last season. But, look, and... I love Tav. I'm a massive Tav fan. You know, I think he's a, I think he's a great captain. He's been, well, he's been a great captain for the club. And I, you have got to be careful. I think when you talk about Tav because of what he's done for this club. You know, when he came to the club and to, to where we are now, he, what he, how he stayed with us and he's helped us get back. But one thing that's really concerned me over preseason and in certain games last season, like the Scottish Cup semi final is his defending. You know, it's been a bit lazy at times. It's look, it's lacked. It's really lacked in areas. Um, today you saw, you know, uh, Hoffenheim exploiting that uh, right side of our defence, pushing balls in behind, pushing balls over the over Tavernier and getting him to turn. And he was really poor from that. And he was poor against Olympiacos, poor against Newcastle as well. The Newcastle left winger had him on toast several times. His his defending skills haven't really improved. And look, the problem he's got is he's not getting any younger and his pace is going to start to go. Not that he had burning pace anyway, but look, Tav has been a fantastic servant for this club. I love Tav and, and I think he's I think Tav is great. 
Um, I think the goals and his contributions, his assists, his, those contributions, absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. But some of his defending recently has really worried me and concerned me. Now, obviously, it is to be hoped that this young man who returned to action today, Dujon Sterling, can, you know, long term, or even I think in certain games this season, replace Tavern, give us another option at right back. Obviously, there's Adam Devine as well. But I think, you know, Michael Beale has certainly placed his um, his faith in Dujon Sterling, given the fact that he is a Beale signing. Someone Beale has brought in um, from Chelsea. So certainly there's a hope there. Now, left back, I think long term, Yefko could play there long term. I don't think in the short term he, he can. Dujon Sterling can play left back. Adam Devine can play left back. I think with a little bit more practice, a little bit more coaching, I think Ridvan will be fine this season. But I do feel we need to address the left side of defence. We do need a left side of centre-back. And I think we do need a, another left back. Now, whether the board are willing to go to signings number 10 and 11 is still for question. Now, it was rumoured the other day in the media that they were prepared to go for signing number 10. Um, that man rumoured to be one of Panzo, Cresswell or Trusty. Uh, you know, there's been rumours about, reports about uh, bids going in for, for Aaron Trusty from Arsenal, who is currently in America with the team. Uh, personally, I'd love to see Aaron Trusty come to the club. I think he's a very fine defender. Uh, quick, can play left back, can play left side centre half. Um, you know, is a good tackler, is, uh, is someone who who works hard, I think would add a lot to this team and certainly would be an upgrade on Ben Davis. I think the defensive woes were bad yesterday. Look, the defence was, again, in that first half especially, was pretty poor. And I do think, though, however, you've got to kind of look at it in terms of the fact that when you've got Goldson back, when you've got Suter back, you have got two very good centre-halves there. And I think uh, two very good centre-halves who will do very well this season. And I know Connor Goldson is not everyone's cup of tea. He's not everyone's favourite. But, you know, like I've explained on a number of times, it's not just about his communication and his organising. I think overall he is a, he's a good defender. He does make mistakes, but if he didn't make those mistakes, he'd be playing at the highest level in England. So, look, we, we look, the days of... There was a fantastic comment the other day on one of the videos about, you know, Lorenzo Amoruso and uh, people like uh, John Brown and people like that. But, look, the days of us buying defenders like Lorenzo Amoruso, Terry Butcher, Richard Goff, Graham Roberts to, to a lesser extent, they're gone. You know, you want a Lorenzo Amoruso these days, you're looking at 30, 40 million pounds. You want a Terry Butcher, you're looking at 60, 70, 80 million pounds. You want a Richard Goff, you're looking at, or a Colin Hendry, you're looking at 80, 90 million pounds. Something we just have not got. You know, Virgil van Dijk, I think it was 85 million pounds he cost Liverpool. One of the best defenders in world football. You know, realistically, that is not something we've got anymore. Connor Goldson, John Suter, Aaron Trusty, if he comes in, that is the kind of level we're at at this moment in time. And unless we get, you know, a shake who's prepared to throw as much money as he can at a club. Look, we're not going to get back to that. We're never going to have an Amoruso, a Butcher, a Goff, a Hendry. I mean, I suppose the chances of getting a Goff, a Hendry are decent if we can get someone to come through the youth system, a young Scottish defender. But realistically, Suter and Goldson are the best two we've got at this moment in time. We've got to obviously work with what we've got. But we do need, I think, to bring in a supplementary left-sided defender who can also play left-back as well. And I think Aaron Trusty would be a great acquisition. Now, let's talk about a former Rangers captain and a Rangers legend. Yes, Mr. Barry Ferguson himself, who was apparently at the Rangers Review live event the other, other night um, on good form by all accounts. Now, we all know how Barry likes to give his opinions and he's not afraid of sharing his views on the club or on the club's players as well. But, you know, you, look, I know some fans get a bit sick of Barry and what he's got to say. I know some fans get a bit irritated with him, but the guy's, you know, a Rangers legend, you know, he was brilliant when he played for the club and he, he's played with some of the best players this club's ever had. And Barry Ferguson is, no matter how annoying he may be at times or whatever, he speaks from the heart and you, you read what he says or you listen to what he says. And to be honest with you, he's right on a lot of occasions and his passion for the club is is second to none. And you know, this, this, is a, this is a guy who, you know, has made over 300 appearances for the club. This is a guy who has won five Scottish Premier League titles, five Scottish Cups, 
five Scottish League Cups and a UEFA Cup runners-up medal whilst playing for Rangers. He is, you know, Mr Rangers in a way. And I know he can, like I said, he can be irritating at times with what he's got to say. Now, he has been talking about two Rangers players and their future. Uh, he's talked about John Lundstrom and Bona Barisic, both of whom were absolutely appalling against Olympiacos. To be fair, Borna and John Lundstrom have been pretty bad all pre-season. John Lundstrom, when he came on against Olympiacos, for example, uh, missed three tackles and gave the ball away three times as well. And it certainly did not get any better at all during that game. And this is what Barry has had to say. Just ask Borna Barisic and John Lundstrom, who've been around here, <coughs> excuse me, long enough to know how it works, who are now getting it in the neck because... Because they're not quite a bit up to speed. Sorry, my voice is going. I do apologise. He went on to say this. There are now questions being asked about whether or not they should be moved out this summer as both are entering the final years of their contracts. They'll have to decide now if they want to sign new deals to stay and fight for a place in the team or, it, or if it's starting to feel as if their time is up here. Certainly... Ferguson cast doubts on whether these two have futures at Ibrox. Um, you know, both of them, yes, are entering the last years of their deals. And realistically, you don't want to see either of them walk away for absolutely nothing in the summer. That is not something that Rangers want, especially after losing Alanda, Kent, Morelos, etc. for nothing this summer. Um, it's certainly something we do not want to repeat. Um, but, you, but look. Barry Ferguson, you know, he's seen players come into this club, great players come into this club, and he knows what he's talking about when it comes to being a player for Rangers. And, you know, I think one of the most interesting things I ever heard him say was that he said once to, a, he used to say to players, you've got 10 minutes, and that's it. And when they asked him, what does he mean by 10 minutes? He said, well, that's pretty much how long you've got before the Rangers fans decide whether you're any good or not. And... You know, he said he used to get on players' backs when they used to come in at half time and say, Well, what's up with the crowd? Why why are they not happy that we're drawing nil-nil? And just basically said to them, That's not good enough. This is Rangers. We we expect to be two, three nil up by half time. We win everything. If even if, if even if we're playing tiddlywinks against another team, we expect to win. You know, been a draw, been a, a great loss. He's not good enough for this club. And I think Barry Ferguson is spot on with the comments that he makes about for, about Barisic and Lundstrom, both of whom I believe do need to be moved on from this club, both of whom I do think could do with a new challenge. And certainly that challenge is not at this club. And if you look as well, you know, with the Rangers midfield, you look at Raskin, Cantwell, Sifuentes, who should arrive next week, according to Michael Beale, Kieran Dow, Yanis Hadji, Ryan Jack, where does John Lundstrom even fit into that midfield? He's not in the same league as any of those six names I've just reeled off. And that's without adding in the likes of Bailey Rice, Alex Lowry, etc. So for me, Lundstrom is really going to struggle for first team minutes. I think he's looked poor last season for the majority of last season. He looked poor again over pre-season. I think it's time he was moved along. And as for Borna Barisic, well, you all know my views on Borna Barisic and how appallingly bad he has been uh, for Rangers over the last 18 to 24 months. Um, so, look, let's talk about wingers. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit in a moment about a young winger from Sunderland that uh, Rangers are apparently interested in, a very talented young man called Tom Watson. <laughs> but this man has been told that he can leave the club. Fashion Sakala apparently remains a target for a Saudi Arabian club and could still leave Ibrox this summer, according to reports. Um, now, apparently, this uh, this club are very interested in getting hold of Sakala, despite having one bid turned down, and they may well return with a second bid. Um, Saudi is certainly the place where all the money is at this moment in time, and offers that come out of Saudi are absolutely incredible. But according to reports, um, Sakala has been told that he can find a new club and he does not have a future at Ibrox. You know, he is not going to get first team minutes and it, it apparently 
is not what he wants. He wants to play first team football. This is something that Michael Beale cannot guarantee him with the likes, obviously, the arrivals of Sam Lammers, Cyril Dessas, Danio, Abdallah Sima, the return, obviously, of Tom Lawrence, Kieran Dow, players of that calibre. We just cannot guarantee him the first team minutes he wants. Kimar Roof also back as well. So, Sakala, who was left out of the squad for the Hoffenheim game today, um, looks like he could well be on his way out of Ibrox. Now, look, I know his numbers look good and he's done it against certain teams, but the problem with Sebastian Sakala for me is the fact that when it really matters, that semi-final in the Scottish Cup, that via play League Cup final, he just bottles it and doesn't do it. And that's, that's just, that's that's what lets us down. And I think that is an element of his game that really does let us down. So personally speaking, I think it's time that Fashion Sakala was moved on from the club. I don't think he's top of the list by any stretch of the imagination to be moved on. I think, you know, obviously, you know, you're looking at Glenn Kamara, you're looking at Rabi Matondo, players that are, you know, much more born of Barisic, who are much more in need of moving on. But... I think, you know, if we can get a good, decent bid for Fashion Sakala, whether that be four or five million pounds, I think we should take it. You know, it's a good amount of money. That money can then be reinvested in the club and possibly used to buy further players. So for me, you know, Fashion Sakala is someone who is expendable with the, the, cal the calibre and the talent of players we have obviously recruited over this summer. And someone who's going to find it very, very difficult and very frustrating, I think, this season as he will not get perhaps the first team minutes that he especially desires. Now, Rangers have, as a club, um, very simple, Zach Lovelace, um, who was brought to the club from Millwall, who's in a very fine club. Also take Bailey Rice, who came from Motherwell as well. Now, Rangers have been linked with a move for another young player, this time from an English club. The This young player that we're talking of has yet to sign professional terms with his parent club, which is Sunderland AFC. That is this young man here, Tom Watson. Tom Watson has played first team minutes for Sunderland, um, making his debut against Huddersfield Town. He's also played against Preston. I think he made six appearances for the club last season. He is a very, very talented winger, quick Tricky, got skills, uh, fast feet, plays for England the 17s, very promising indeed, very highly regarded at Sunderland. Now, according to reports coming out of Glasgow and coming out of the British media, Tom Watson is a subject of a possible move to Rangers. Uh, like I said, Watson is nearly out of contract and has not yet signed on the deal and has not yet signed a professional terms contract with with Sunderland. So therefore could be got hold of and only a compensation fee paid to Sunderland for the services of Tom Watson. This young man is very, very good. I've seen him play live. He is quality and will be a great acquisition for Rangers. And I think someone who could be certainly knocking on the door of the first team very, 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 very shortly. And you know what? Since obviously we've lost Ryan Kent, we haven't really got any wingers. Watson is the an out and out winger. He can also play centre forward as well, but his position, the primary position is winger. So very promising indeed, very talented and someone definitely to look out for. Well, let's finish off by talking about the final pre-season friendly that was played yesterday. 2-2 draw for Rangers, a second half fight back with through Tavernier and Sam Lammers. Now, obviously, like I said, I covered the game in the quick reaction video yesterday. And um, if you want to know what my thoughts on the game, go back and check out that video. I want to mention one player in particular from that game, someone who I think has impressed throughout preseason, and that is Sam Lammers. Now, Sam Lammers, when he joined, came with, I don't know, there's a lot of people had doubts on him due to his goal scoring record, which hadn't been the best in Italy. But since he arrived at Ibrox, he has looked very, very impressive indeed. Technically, very good, great skill. A player in. And I'm not saying any stretch of the imagination he is as good as this guy, but, you know, in the same sort of mould as a Dennis Bergkamp, a 10, someone who can play off that main striker as Bergkamp did with Henri for all those years for Arsenal. Lammers is absolute quality for me. And two goals in four games is is, is superb. You know, one of the things that Sam was lacking, and I said this in, in the video yesterday, is confidence. And I think this pre-season series of games certainly will have given Sam a lot of confidence, especially, obviously, as the praise that he's received from fans and analysts and coaches alike. 
for his performances, and in particular from his head coach, Michael Beale, uh, well, his manager, sorry, Michael Beale, who has been very, very impressed with Sam and all he's done. Sam Lammers looks like a quality player and someone I think will be, have a major effect on the Scottish Premier League this season. I think he's capable of getting 10 to 15 goals and at least 10 assists. You know, you could be looking at 20, 25 goal contributions this season coming from this fantastic player who is well worth every penny of the three and a half million that we paid for him to um, his parent club, Atalanta. Well, let me know what you think of Sam Lammers. And please let me know in the comments below what you think of any of the stories we've covered in this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, remember, hit that sub, ring that notification bell, help us to keep building this channel. And I, as always, just to finish off, I need to do two things for me. Number one, hit that like. And number two, remember always, we are the people. <laughs>